Well, thank you, Dan. It's a real privilege actually to join with you all from people all across New Zealand, but also I believe some from overseas, Australia. Just such a, a blessing. And for me personally, uh, it's really special because some years ago I felt God put in my heart a, a real impression that from Cape Reinga to Stewart Island, Christians standing in a line all down the centre of New Zealand. And as we linked and as we united together, I just saw all the problems rolling off either side into the sea. And so now to be part of this, where we've got people from all over New Zealand uniting as one to pray, to me, it's just a, a, such an excitement of seeing that fulfillment starting to happen. So um, I've sort of been asked to follow on from Richard Brunton, who really shared on the awesome power of blessing and where our words um, really bring life and, and can bring transformation. It was particularly one thing that he shared that I really, really touched me. And that was when he went into his business early each morning to invoke blessing on the business, he was started saying, God bless you. And he'd think of the employees, he'd think of his business, and he spoke this blessing. And then one day God really quickened him about changing it from God bless you to I bless you. And he personalized that. And, and I believe there's a lot in that where we are personally speaking blessing. It's really coming from our heart to see people encouraged in the name of the Lord. So in sharing tonight, the first point I want to really bring is before we can really impart blessing, we need to see blessing. We need to receive blessing. And uh, right into our heart. And when I start looking at the scriptures, I just want to take it from Genesis 12, where Lord spoke to Abraham and said, I will bless you and make your name great. Imagine God saying that to us. We would be pretty excited, but it didn't stop there. And he said, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And then in number six, we see this taken a bit further, where Moses spoke, where Lord spoke to Moses, and he said, speak to Aaron and his sons, you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, and we know the one, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. Perhaps we can just picture that in your mind for a moment. Here's God speaking to to Moses, and he gives Moses this blessing. So Moses then takes it to Aaron and his sons and imparts it to them. They stand on the hill and they shout this blessing out over the multitude of Israel. And God put his name upon them. He, God's ownership came on them and they were blessed. And this is what I see us doing, receiving and then speaking it forth over people's lives. So what is the blessing we are blessed with? Well, to me, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 sums it up. It says, we're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, in Jesus. So the, but to me, the greatest blessing we can receive is God's revelation. We all like to have health and other things, but the greatest revelation is God's, the greatest blessing is God's revelation especially about that which is to come, which touches others. So the first thing we need to do is receive that blessing. So take time to be still and let your heart be filled. God wants to reveal things. He wants to show us what is to come. And then daily picture it and start to own it. Second point is once God reveals something, we need to lay hold of it. Don't let it die. We need to lay hold of this revelation. Keep it alive daily. Speak it out daily. Whatever it is that God has revealed, speak it out. If we go back, it goes to John 1. It talks about in the beginning was the word and in him was life. 
And that light was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and I like this bit, and the darkness has not overcome it. The revelation of Jesus is never going to be overcome. Matthew 5 says, you are the salt of the earth. It also says you are the light that shines for the world to see. In the same way, you should be a light for other people. Live so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. What God has spoken in your heart, again, keep it alive no matter what the circumstances. As that light starts to shine, darkness cannot overcome it. And, and what encourages me the most is that where Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me. And so therefore go and make disciples. And I will be with you always to the end of the age. Jesus is with us. And so not only is in us, he's with us. We carry his presence. This to me is the, the very source of our blessing. Because of this blessing, we are not powerless, but mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. God will, will gives us answers that overcome the powers of this evil world. And that we as Christians need to be so encouraged that God has an answer for our problems today that as we lay a hold of it, it's going to overcome. Sadly, though, when evil becomes our focus, so often we end up that the result is discouragement and feeling of powerlessness. We just sort of feel like, and often people give up. But if we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, what he says will happen. So if we go back, as point one was, before we can bless, we first must receive that revelation right into our heart. Then we lay hold of it. Third thing I want to share tonight is just we need to speak it out. We need to speak forth what it is that God's revealed. Don't hide it. Which, again, is why I spoke that right at the beginning of that line right down the country. I've, I've spoken out many times because I, I carry that now. And I want to see it happen. Another illustration in Scripture is Moses with his hands up in the air. He knew what he had to do. He was connecting with God and receiving from God and then invoking it upon Joshua. But we know the story, he got weary and his hands hung down. The power got switched off. If God has given us something and we keep connecting to God, his power will flow. doesn't matter how impossible it will happen. I just want to share a couple of things from my own story. When I was farming, God gave me two dreams. And these dreams, I knew God had spoken, but I didn't understand them. But what they turned out to be, the first church I went to in the Philippines was the first dream. And it was an isolated place, way up in the hills. And then nearly 18 months later, I went to Indonesia, to another isolated area, and it was the second dream. God had showed me in advance what was going to happen. Before I started at uh, the community pastor at Grace City, God gave me two visions. The first was about things that people being connected together in relational dynamics and just bonded in unity. And the second one was about things going off in random directions, but, but they connected. And so during my time, there, I walked alongside many people that God had spoken to, but with each person, their, their, their vision was for something different. And, and so there was all these different things that were happening because of the different visions people carried. And in that time, I realized that the value of getting alongside people where God has spoken to. But there was four that just stood out, which I knew I had to give my time to. And, and two were about nations, two were in New Zealand, like Gayan has mentioned. With my connections in Zambia, we're working towards trying to mobilize 100,000 people to bring change to the country. With Fiji, and I'll come back to that in a minute, we're working on bringing influence to the whole nation. God wants to give Christians a strategy to affect places. And the two in New Zealand were two critical areas 
coming around people in the last days of life to journey with them and really bring them to a whole new spiritual place. And then with people coming out of in prison or coming out of prison, that there's a connection that they just don't fall through the cracks and get lost. And so these four areas, I need to daily be like Moses, standing on the hill, hands up, believing for God's power to flow. But I just want to talk further about the Fiji one. I met Wong in Nalago a few years back. And it's one of those guys, when I first met him, God just spoke to me and said, walk alongside him. I knew nothing about him. He was just like another person I met. And when you're pastor in a church that size, you meet a lot of people. But I knew I had to walk alongside him. And his, and I found out his story. When he was young, his father spoke over him and said, I want you to go and get educated and come back and free up our people. The Fijian, indigenous Fijian, own most of the land in Fiji, but they live in poverty. And, and so while I came to New Zealand, got trained in IT, worked overseas for a period, then went back to Fiji and started to try and put into action what his father had spoken over him, the blessing his father had spoken. But then because of circumstances, he had to leave Fiji and came back to New Zealand. And so we've been walking together for some years now. But this thing is taking off. And, and in the last few months, he's established 14 collection centres around New Zealand, totally connecting with the Fijian community across the country. We're building quite a number of connections, all sorts of areas in Fiji. And I see a number of other people all starting to get connected and come around it. What extra excites me about this, also some years ago, I felt God spoke into my life and said something would happen in Fiji. It would then happen in Tonga, and then it would happen in New Zealand. And that was some years ago. Now Fiji is so ripe for the gospel, so ripe for revival because of what's happening. And, and so first we're going to see it in Fiji, then Tonga, then New Zealand. And, and the more I dwell on that, the more excited I get. So just go back over those points. Before we can bless, we must receive revelation. Then need to lay hold of it. And then we need to speak it out, declare it as a blessing. But uh, I don't know if Wonga come in. I, I asked him if he'd join us and if he would pray. So is he there, Gayan? But after, I've also asked Simon, who I can see here, Simon from Auckland. Yeah, Simon, if you unmute yourself, yeah, you can, you can get started. So if Wong is not there, if you, I could get Simon to pray. Simon, good friend of mine who I love to discuss, especially biblical things and things. Um, good, good. A Christian with a heart after God. So, but just wanted to share that with you to encourage you. Grab a hold of God's river and and live it we, and encourage everybody else you know who God has spoken to to keep strong to the vision God's given them. But thank you for allowing me to share.